2024 has highlighted the increasing threat of extreme weather events associated with climate change. This year has seen devastating events across the globe, floods in Spain and the Sahara, severe hurricanes and typhoons battering the US and Southeast Asia, droughts in the Middle East and wildfires across South America. While these events are not new, their frequency and intensity are increasing, threatening both human and economic systems worldwide as more people and businesses operate in affected areas. Throughout this video series, we will discuss the impact on businesses and supply chains using real-world examples to highlight financial, operational and social damage. We will also review the challenges involved in accessing both renewable and traditional energy sources due to conflicts and sanctions and highlight how both direct climate change events such as drought and indirect climate change events such as protests are inextricably linked, creating a complex environment for businesses to adapt, operate and remain resilient. Throughout this short video series, we will explore physical security threats as a result of climate change. We will look ahead to 2025 and explore what businesses should be preparing for. We will look at the impact of climate change events on businesses, particularly from a forensic account perspective. We will look at the risks of not preparing from a risk engineering perspective. And finally, we will explore tangible strategies that you can apply to make sure your business is prepared. On July 22nd, 2024, the global average temperature reached an all-time high of 17.16 degrees Celsius, surpassing the previous record set just one day earlier. The global temperature is likely to exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times temporarily in the next five years. And it's virtually certain that 2024 will be the world's warmest on record. These climatic changes are not only causing physical damage, but are driving a financial burden on a global scale. 2024 is on track to be the fifth consecutive year in which global insured losses exceed $100 billion. Take the recent hurricanes in the US as an example. Hurricane Helene, which made landfall in Florida as a category four storm, is estimated to have caused between eight and $14 billion in insured damages. Hurricane Milton, which hit less than two weeks later, is projected to add significantly to the toll, potentially causing an additional $50 billion in insured losses. For businesses, the impact of these events can be far-reaching, impacting business continuity for weeks or months afterwards. Supply chains are often disrupted by climate events, creating risks for businesses. For example, drought exacerbated by climate change in Central America has reduced traffic through the Panama Canal by 40%. Although water levels have started to rise, in October this year, the water level was 81.7 feet, and in October 2010, it was 85.79 feet. These historically low levels have forced the ACP to reduce daily traffic in the canal. Currently, the limit is 32 vessels per day compared to 36 vessels under normal conditions, but the limit has been much more severe than that. For instance, earlier this year, the limit was only 24 vessels per day. This, coupled with shipping through the Suez Canal, also reducing due to conflict in the Middle East and Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen escalating attacks on Red Sea cargo ships, has caused further bottlenecks for businesses. Alternative use can be used, but alternatives are often slower, adding up to 15 days on some Europe to Asia routes. We're also seeing increasing civil unrest linked to climate change. Activists such as Just Stop Oil have caused mass disruption over the years. A recent incident caused disruption on the M25 motorway in London, resulting in the road being shut down for over 120 hours, affecting 700,000 drivers. Policing costs were £1.1 million, and the estimated economic cost was £765,000. Another example was in Germany, where last generation activists glued themselves to runways, costing thousands. Budget airline Eurowings wants climate protesters to pay €120,000 in compensation for disruption caused at German airports. The US is the second largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, and President-elect Trump has already stated that his goal in his second term will be to boost fossil fuel production. In 2017, less than six months into his first presidency, Trump formally announced that he was withdrawing the United States from the Paris Climate Accord. This has resulted in climate change activists reacting negatively to his re-election and could lead to increased activism and disruption to businesses. But the bid to move to green energy has also has its challenges. The impact on local communities can be devastating. For example, mining for raw materials often results in demonstrations as local communities experience environmental degradation, including pollution of their waterways, which affects fishing and their general health. There have also been protests over local resources being utilised by the West for things such as electric vehicle production. Our senior intelligence analyst, Jay Patel, discusses this in more detail, highlighting the complexities of renewable energy resources such as lithium. South America is a key player in the lithium market as it's home to the lithium triangle, contributes around 60% of the, of the world's lithium. Lithium itself is renewable energy. 
um, even though mining it may have quite a lot of environmental impacts. Like where lithium is mined, it's a vast, the vast plains along the lithium triangle. So that impacts many, many communities. Mining requires tons of water to be to be able to be done so that can increase the threat of kind of drought or water scarcity especially in communities that are kind of waterlocked so they're kind of reliant on 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 waterways for for all different reasons so you find that maybe the smaller communities that reside closer to the kind of mining plains are the most impacted however i think it is becoming more more apparent that these kind of climate impacts are spreading across the region even in in more major cities like i think there's been this year alone there's been such an increase in different natural hazards which i suppose in part can be due to climate change so i think this the region itself is seeing many different kind of impacts of climate nationalizing lithium can have both positive and negatives we're kind of seeing that now and what we'll see in 2025 is as Chile have partnered or are planning to partner their government and private sectors within lithium mining. That's to kind of increase revenue, but also to protect or aim to protect the biodiversity in the area. I think the downside of that could be that we could see increased prices globally, especially along in the kind of vehicle manufacturing with the lith- with lithium batteries. Um, it could also interrupt kind of energy. So lithium is used within power plants as a coolant. Cooling. It can be used for solar, solar and wind. So as as renewable as it is, there could be issues with cost and demand, and even transportation and supply. And I think we could see a lot of kind of competition between different actors within within lithium mining. And so another consequence that is happening due to again mining in general, but mainly around lithium mining again in the lithium triangle is communities that are kind of cut off or without water or are finding themselves without kind of means of fishing, without means of, of even supply chain, because r- rivers in, in South America are used heavily for transportation. You're finding that people are protesting. There has been, I suppose, isolated instance of kind of trying to prevent kind of mining. So it could be like blocking roads. Uh, but like I said, the, the lithium triangle is quite a vast area and, it, and it's over multiple countries. So each country's response is, is slightly different depending on how on how they're impacting but I think it is fair to say that all the communities that lie or in an area that is predominantly kind of reliant on the area of the lithium triangle all implications due to kind of environmental impacts that are negatively impacting their their areas. Preparing for and responding to the operational challenges posed by climate change and extreme weather events can help ensure that essential business functions remain operating during and after a disaster or at least that downtime is minimized. Extreme weather events can threaten the ability of businesses to operate normally. They can affect supply chains, the workforce, property, access to IT systems, finance and insurance, and even the ability to remain operational at all in the long term. By integrating climate risk and extreme weather management into business continuity planning, organisations can minimise downtime and ensure a quicker return to usual operations, satisfying customers and shareholders alike. Join us tomorrow for our next episode where we look ahead to 2025, exploring what businesses should be preparing for in order to mitigate risk. Want to discover more? Sign up for our webinar with leading industry experts on the 5th of December, where we will explore the key natural catastrophes and climate change events of 2024 and what these mean for the evolving risk landscape in 2025. Sign up by clicking the link in this post.